Shalom, all. giving all praises, honors, and glories unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rakar Kadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth that were well. Shalom to the elect scattered through the four corners of the earth. My name is Kodash Paya. And I'm going to open up with the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 8. It says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So the point of this verse is better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And we know the end of, of all these prophecies being fulfilled, right? For Yahweh Shai to make his grand entrance to bring the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven, you know? And it's within us, right? So this is better is the end of the thing because we know the covenant, we know the promise, the agreement with the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shah, Bashim, Makakwadash, Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, using His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, right? To walk as as an example, um, and also. Real quick, when the Lord gave Moses the um the uh made a covenant with him in the book of Exodus thirty four, around about the twenty seventh verse, which was the laws, and we know that we can't keep all the laws one hundred percent right now. This is why Yahweh shed his blood for us. And died for us, you know, so that we may have the opportunity to repent. Because if we was already in a new covenant, we wouldn't have to repent. Because we'll, we'll be perfect. And we're not perfect here. We're still in these decrepit bodies getting sick. We're still out there prophesying, teaching our people the law, statutes, and commandments, and the grace and mercy and the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding according to the scriptures, the name, and so on and so forth. If we was in the new covenant, all the Israelites would be praising the Lord right now. No, Israel, none of our, when I mean Israelites, I mean you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, which are the biblical Israelites. Right? So it's not established yet. Now, we're not performing the things of the old, right? We're going to get that in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, right? The 12 tribes. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the days, so like in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt which my covenant, they break, right? Our, you know, our forefathers, you know, have broke in a covenant, right? Uh, Jake back then. And we're going to read how. It says, All that I was in husband unto them, saith the Lord, right? But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in there in their inward parts, right? So, if the law is in your inward part, right, then there should be no reason for you to break them. You see? That will be a form of perfection. It says, and write it in their hearts, meaning, la'ab, meaning in their minds. And will be their God, and they shall be my people. Here's the point. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. Who's our neighbor? Well, Jake's that are considered Gentiles, that don't know the name of their Heavenly Father. They don't know that they're the biblical Israelites. They don't know these things. Right? So therefore, they're all in the way of darkness, committing all, all types of wicked acts, 
right? Because they, they are ignorant to it. But now, see the Lord raised the prophets through the apostles on down, right? Teaching sound doctrine, teaching the people. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, show my people their transgressions. And that's in the Old Testament. This is the Old Testament. You see? It says, um, saying, know the Lord. So we're not going to have to teach our people to know the Lord. In the kingdom, as soon as they be born, they're going to know the Lord. You know? And that's why the kingdom is going to be forever. Because we will never go off. That's why we're never going to die. Because we will never sin again. You understand? These are the things that's happening now as we speak. So showing you in an obvious standpoint that we are not in the new covenant. It is not established yet. Yahweh Shah hasn't come back yet. Right? It says, uh, But they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. So everybody's going to, you know, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. And see, we have yet to uh, reach, Yahweh Shah has yet to come to bring judgment. So this statement I just read is after the fact when Yahweh Shah brings judgment. Okay. Alright, now because our people in the old, you know, covenant, Old Testament, they would sacrifice animals, different certain animals as an offering. You had sin offerings, peace offerings. When you offer something, you offer an animal unto the Lord. But a lot of them would already premeditate the sins that they was going to commit. So they already had certain animals prepared for after they commit their iniquity. Right? And that was completely going all the way off. But see, now we don't sacrifice animals for a sin offering unto the Lord to forgive us. See, Yahweh Shai came and was that last sacrificial lamb, sacrificial animal for us to know now, brought back into remembrance and to be able to repent. See, there's not, like Apostle Toha said, there's not going to be any prophets in the kingdoms, just kings. We're not going to have to repent in the kingdom. You see? Scriptures say the fashion of this world shall pass away. You know? And we're still in captivity. <laughs> we're still subjected to payments. We still got to work for, you know? So, it's not established. Now we're close to it being established, but it's not, right? It says, uh, matter of fact, let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter Like it, with right? And A did not, um, did not Peter state what that we look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, right? And this was a long time ago, and we're still saying the same thing. Right? But anyway, this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, and verse 8, it says, let's start at verse 7, it says, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. 
So the first covenant was not faultless. You see? But this new covenant, when the kingdom of heaven is, uh, 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 um, is established on earth, it will be faultless. No? It says, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the ancient time, in the day when I spoke to them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. Right? And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For the, and, and what? They went whoring to other gods. They were committing. The same thing our people are doing today. So, come on, man. It's not established yet. We are hoping for it. We are waiting. Like the scripture I opened up with, better is the end. Right? You read about the kingdom of heaven. In the book of Revelation 21, 22. That's the end. Those prophecies has yet to happen. Right? It says. For this is the covenant that I will make with, their, with the house of Israel. After those days. Saith the Lord. I will put my law in, the, in, in their mind. Into their mind. Pardon me, and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me my people, to me a people. Right? And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Now let's go to. Let's go to. I want to go here real quick in the book of Isaiah chapter 24 and verse number 5. Right? Matter of fact, let's start at 4. It says, The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languished and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the habitants thereof. The earth is still defiled, right? Isaiah uh, 82. You know, so, uh, um, they walk on in darkness, all the earth uh, 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 is out of course, roughly paraphrasing. It says, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Alright? So this is why the Lord... Yahushua came back as that last sacrifice, as it tells you in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Let's start at 16. This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and their minds, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Here's the point now where rem remission of these is, right? There is no more offering for sin. So we don't, now what we do, scripture, uh, um, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. You see? Just like Yahweh Shai did. You know, while we out there teaching, crying aloud. Right, and some brothers may have to be persecuted. Hey, some brothers in the truth have passed away. And we're in those times. You know what I mean? So, in the kingdom, it speaks about the um, immortality. You know? Everything's going to be peaceful. You know, all Israel 
is eventually going to come back in their right minds. Right? And the laws will will fully be established in the minds of our people. Alright? So-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, which are the biblical Israelites. The whole nation, all the 12 tribes. But right now, they're still bugged out. They still, you know, we're still in captivity. We still sin unwillingly. Sometimes, hey, whatever. You know, we all fall short. So, out with the old and with the new. We're becoming new men through the spirit. Right? And um, we shall all be changed soon. When your shy comes back. Anyway, with that, I hope this was edifying. Until next time, I'm going to say Shalom.